Mike Erickson, we are here in what I think is arguably one of the coolest rooms in the Wheatstone factory, <laughs> your audio processing lair. Yes. And we are talking about mic processing. And this is an area where Wheatstone has really kind of become an industry standard now with the M4. Let's talk about what it does, why it does what it does so well. One of the nice things about the M4 is that um, it's basically the, um, the end result of uh, requests over a number of years since we introduced Wheatnet to bring the dynamics of the mic processing into a blade. Uh, when we first started the Wheatnet system, we had a mic preamp blade, but there was no processing built in. We introduced the uh, Aura 8IP, which was a three-band audio processor in a blade, and you could process signal sources and then route them to wherever you needed. But a lot of people said, well, why don't you do the same for microphones? And that's where the M4 was born. Um, the M4 is basically, in short, the M1 processor in blade form in four instances running at the same time. So if you're familiar with the M1, which has very simple controls, um, controls basically anyone can use. You have, uh, you know, threshold control, compression ratio, attack and release. Those controls that were so simplistic in the M1, we ported them into the M4. So we made a processor that can not only be uh, very versatile, uh, can distribute microphone audio to wherever it needs to go. We also made it simple and easy to use. So in blade form, it can take a mic that's anywhere in a facility and process it, right? Well, actually, uh, the, the M4, you, you need the dedicated inputs for the mic. You see them distributed in studios. You know, they're not living in a TOC, for instance. They'd be living in the actual studio. So the, the guest mic, the main host mic, and any other mics in the studio would be plugged into the M4. That audio can then be processed. The, the processed audio then can be sent to anyone or anywhere in the facility. It can be brought up in a production studio, it can be brought in an editing suite, into a newsroom, and obviously on the console that's in the studio that's hosting the M4 as well. That's the benefit of the M4, just being able to take the mic audio, process it simply and elegantly, and then distribute it anywhere on the Wheatnet system. Let's talk presets, because this is such an important piece of mic processing. There are so many different voices in a typical radio station that have so many different needs for processing depending on the mic they're using, the room they're in, and, and so forth. What, what do you think about when you're setting presets, and, and let's talk about the value of just being able to punch up and say, okay, here's my personal mic preset, I'm good to go. The, the, the nice part of presets is they give you starting points, and we do that with on-air processing, we do that with the R8 for streaming and for other HD applications. The problem with microphone processing is the variables that are outside of the processing itself are so great that we do give you a very good starting points, but you're, you're talking about room acoustics, you're talking reflections, you're talking about the type of microphone, you're talking about the amplitude of the talent, how the talent works the microphone. Um, you know, we get all the time, we get requests for, can you make me a preset, you know, that sounds like this other processor and they'll give you no other information. It's like, okay, what type of mics are you using? You know, can I get a recording of the microphone audio raw so I can kind of hear what's going on in the room? How much expansion am I going to need? You know, is this going to be one preset that's going to be used over multiple talents? Or are you going to allow the talent to change the preset, you know, for different, for different voice characteristics? So it, it's hard to like just say, okay, um, you know, I'm just going to make a preset and it's going to work out of the box. There's a lot of tuning that goes into mic processor, everything from, you know, the, how the preamps sound, how the, uh, the console sounds, the room, the talent, the microphones, the on-air processing, so many variables that you almost need to work very intimately one-on-one -on -one with the people. You know, you get, I get some people who will, you'll make a preset for them and they'll deploy it on the main mic and it'll sound great. And then they'll complain that the guest mics with the same presets and the same mics don't sound the same. You got the room angles and everything else can change the way a microphone sounds just by moving it to the other side of the room. So you really need to work with people intimately to, to kind of focus in on and get the sound out they want.